In this video, I want to break down why using the STAR method for tackling behavioral interviews at a top tech company is not a good solution for you. And I want to share with you another solution that I've created called the OpGAR method. The first thing I'm going to do is dive into the STAR method uh, and some of the shortcomings there. And then I'll dive in to OpGAR and I'll break that down for you step by step so you can get an offer at one of your dream companies, okay? Let's dive into the example of STAR technique. There's tons of YouTube videos about using the STAR method and that being the gold standard. Uh, but the one thing that never gets mentioned in STAR technique, or at least in the description of the STAR technique, is the word goal. We talk about the situation that we're in. We talk about the tasks, maybe the challenges, the constraints, the deadlines. We talk about the actions highlighting the things you did, initiative and leadership and what have you, and then the results. This is one thing that gets a lot of people hung up uh, with on, uh, on interviews at top tech companies. I see it all the time when I'm doing mock interviews with people. They just don't have clarity on a goal. They don't have clarity on a problem and they don't have clarity on a clear result anchored specifically to the problem. And that's what we're going to get into. Let's dive into OpGAR and I'll go through each piece step by step. The first step in OpGAR is the overview. The second step is the problem. The third step is the goal. The fourth step is actions. And the final step is results. So we'll go up to the top here. You want to deliver your story as if you are going through the first page of a brand new book, right? You are the story and you're explaining it to them as if they are listening to an audiobook from page one. What year is it? What company were you working for? What does the company do? What division of the company and what does that division do? What job title did you have? What initiative were you assigned to? And then you can explain the initiative so that it's easy to understand for anyone. And you can even go so far as providing an example of a customer, of how a customer may use the product or service so that it's super, super clear. One of the things that a lot of candidates do is they jump into the story um, for any behavioral question at a place that's actually very confusing to follow. They don't give any of the context, what year, what company division. And so you're left wondering all these different questions. And so it can become this really painful follow-up set of questions that wastes a bunch of, a bunch of time during the interview. For me, I would say something like, it was 2017 when I joined Amazon. That was my first year. The division that I was working for was Amazon Custom uh, or dot .com, Amazon.com for customizable products. A lot of people don't know Amazon for purchasing customizable goods like a custom cutting board with their name on it or for example, a Nike shoe where you can color the swoosh or where you can get some different product like a couch or a configurable table that has a number of different uh, dynamic priced options. So if I select different legs, I would get a new price. I owned the experience of the end to end customer journey from the time they were shopping on amazon.com to the time the product was ultimately fulfilled and shipped. And I also owned the seller experience of listing those products behind the scenes. So that can provide enough context for somebody to say, oh, okay, cool. Now this person can jump in to the problem that they were facing. So here's one example. Revenue is down X percent in this year, in 2022, or customer service contacts are up 20% year over year, or website or web page conversion is down X percent from one period of time to another period of time. And the last example here, new user registration is down X percent. You can use any example that you want here, but you want to be very specific and you want to be very time bound. You want to use numbers that you have conviction on. And a couple things that I wrote down here is a question of how do you know? How do you know specifically that revenue is down? Um, a couple other ones that I have are, what is the trend if you don't fix this problem in the future? I face this type of, uh, or these type of questions uh, during interviews at Amazon and during interviews at uh, Meta or now, or uh, Facebook and now Meta. 
where they really want to dig into uncovering if I really understood the goal and if I really understood the data behind that goal. Um, One thing that happened during COVID, as an example, at Amazon was that sales were insanely good across all product categories on the dot-com on the website. And so uh, people would ask me, how do you know that the revenue change that you were trying to affect actually was affected by what you did or what COVID did. And I had answers for that. Um, And so a lot of times people get really caught off guard by these, how do you know questions? So just be prepared. The next thing is the goal. You should be really specific and focused on just one thing. It's really hard to do because we can think that there's a lot of sub goals, but you can think about a goal or goals as a hierarchy. There's some goals that some people are working on down here, maybe at the bottom. And in the middle, some people are working on other goals. Maybe one person is trying to fix the conversion of a button on a page. But the leadership at the very top of this triangle, they're not concerned necessarily about the conversion of a button. They're concerned about global conversion and how it affects revenue. So usually there's some kind of revenue component that's involved in a lot of these uh, goals. Um, It doesn't have to necessarily be a revenue component, but think about goals as a hierarchy and you want to really try to express one primary goal that's attached to what you would need to communicate to a senior leader if they walked into the room, because they're not going to care about all the nitty gritty goals that you're trying to affect. They're going to con- uh, be concerned about the top level goal. The next thing are the actions. Okay. So I like to think about actions being grouped into a number of themes, a number of chapters of your story, of your book that you're trying to deliver. The first thing might be some infrastructure changes, right? That's the the chapter, infrastructure. When there's a number of things that you did with infrastructure to affect change, maybe you uh, enabled some kind of customer tooling, okay? Maybe you created some microservices or maybe you had to make it cloud-based. The second theme would be some stakeholder management. Um, You know, maybe you had to write a document to leadership or gain some alignment. You could just express those things under that theme, under that chapter. The third thing maybe is some user experiences, uh, user experience changes that you had to work collaboratively with the UX UI team or maybe experiment with users to get a sense of um, how you could affect some change within that theme. But keep in mind that the person interviewing you is often typing like crazy. They're typing all of these notes. So it makes it much easier for them to say, oh, okay, they have this theme. And then they can make sub bullets and organize the notes of how they're you know, typing the notes for you in a much better, much more efficient way. So they're really going to appreciate if you try to uh, organize things into themes. The last thing here is the results. You want the results to be anchored by the goal you communicated. Usually in a story, I like to reiterate exactly what the goal was. So if my goal was increased web page conversion from X to Y, um, Uh, in 2022 or increase conversion X percent from 2021 to 2022, then I would just say, as you know, here was my goal and you you basically uh, communicated out. Then you talk about how you exceeded or met the goal that you created. And then you want to have some back pocket information about how you know. As I had talked about uh, before, that COVID example, right? If I would have done nothing, I could have potentially increased revenue or increased conversion uh, just by sitting on my hands, right? Maybe this initiative had literally nothing to do with it. And that's what the interviewer in some cases is going to want to try to dig into when it comes to an interview at a top tech company. They really want to get specific about how much you know and how much you don't know about this goal to exemplify that you are an owner, right? That you will do whatever it takes, that you know all the different behind the scenes metrics that do and do not affect change for this specific thing. That's all I got for you in this video. Uh, I think the OpGuard method is a much better way to think about um, tackling 
these interview questions. What I will say is it's uh, not a one size fits all for all questions. I like to use the OpGuard method specific to uh, achievement related stories, maybe stories where you were thinking really big about something, uh, some uh, areas where you delivered results. Some of the more ambiguous questions about you know how you manage a difficult interaction with a customer or uh, failure related questions. Um, those are not exactly questions that you use with the OpGuard method. So just use this more specific to uh, achievements, thinking big, delivering results. All right. Have a great uh, day. And that's all I got.